gentlemen and women of the press, invited guests, ladies and gentlemen. We'd like to say thank you so much for joining us. You are warmly welcome. Let's give ourselves a round of applause, please. Ladies and gentlemen, your excellencies, you're welcome to Concrete Ideas 5.0, organized by Lafarge Africa. It is with great pleasure that I welcome you to the fifth edition of our quarterly policy series, Concrete Ideas. These public-private dialogues have, of course, been on for the past two years and have demonstrably been effective in bringing about sustainable and positive change in the sector. We have discussed public-private partnerships and rapidly upscaling Nigeria's economic infrastructure, the root cause of building collapse, new solutions to Nigeria urban housing and public-private partnerships in urban regeneration, and highlighted very rich recommendations and resolutions from these discussions. I think it's important that we commend Lafarge for this platform that they've created. And I think um, the quality product that the, the group also has been building over the time has translated into a significant growth of the construction and housing space. It has increased, of course, economic activities and development and of course led to growth of our national GDP. The theme for today's session, building up safely. This is number one priority. I mean, uh, building in general has to be uh, very safe, whether it's on a low rise or a high rise, because it, it's all about the, the life of the people, the inhabitants, and the workers and the contractors during the construction uh, period. So uh, safety is number one factor. Building safety is first and best guaranteed before the process of building is safe and construction commences. It begins with safe and standard building plans, quality building materials, and the adherence to pro proposed plans and structure. Being more safe, it doesn't mean that you need to be more costly uh, or less environmental friendly, uh, or you lose the vision on CO2 emission or lose the vision on sustainability. I think everything can come together. For us to build a state of our intent, building must be safe and lives must be protected. Bearing in mind that the development of tall buildings is the current trend in modern cities all over the world, what do you think should be done to create greater awareness and encourage industry stakeholders to take advantage of these opportunities. That's why Lagos State set up the Lagos Homes. Lagos Home Ownership of the State. And that's why we are building those flats. On each floor there will be one, two, three bedroom, so that you can have a mix of people. It's also to arrange society. And then we give mortgage, so that you can pay in 10 years. You pay 200, whatever, depending on your salary. Well, um, they say necessity is the mother of invention. As the city of Lagos grows, there's also the need for it to be able to accommodate the number of people that um, come into Lagos to work and live on almost a daily basis. When you're constructing a house and trying to make sure it's affordable, um, infrastructure can account for anything between 15 to 30 percent of the actual overall cost. Looking at meteorological wind factors so that you know where to place windows, how to orientate houses, where the wind flows and so on is incredibly important. Sizes of windows and there, so on and so forth. So there are a multitude of small things you could do to add value and to ensure that kind of that affordability is possible. We have to think life cycle. So it's not enough for us to, and it's not just about buildings, it's also about the environment that we create, including the infrastructure that we create. Now, Lagos State Fiscal Planning Permit has been going out to ensure that there's increase in enforcement and compliance. That way you begin to reintegrate the society, people begin to live collaboratively together, you end up not uh, leaving the starter of the haves and the haves not. Life is more important than the billion that you are going to make because you cannot buy a single soul.
for 600 trillion. But what we've done over the past um, 10, 15 years as Alapaja Africa, we've covered the um, entire building space when it comes to multi-stories. Um, the Honorable Deputy Governor was saying that you have some terminals where you have to have a power going as deep as 130 meters, 140 meters. You cannot do that with the normal concrete that you produce on site. So you need a company or an organization that can produce that type of concrete. Well, Lafarge Africa as a member of Wholesome, we've been working on this for, for years. Uh, actually, it's now what we are trying to do through the concrete ideas is building the bridges between a product which is already available or can be available on the short term and the construction codes and the legislation of the country that can allow the usage of these materials. On behalf of the entire management and staff of Lafarge Africa PLC, I would like to extend our deepest appreciation to our special guest of honor, the Executive Governor of Lagos State, Babajide Sonwonlu, ably represented by the Deputy Governor of Lagos State, Dr. Femi Hamzat. We thank him most sincerely for sharing powerful insights and policy ideas that will help to shape the construction and housing sectors. And my most sincere appreciation goes to our CEO, Khalid El Dokani, for his remarkable support and leadership and to all members of Lafarge ESCO and the entire team at Lafarge Africa.